You've probably been told that your metabolism is the reason you can't lose weight. And it's easy to believe when every video online tells you that it's broken, slow, or something that needs fixing. But if you keep blaming your metabolism, you'll ignore the real reason why your progress has stalled and never find the right path to fixing it. So today we'll walk through exactly how the metabolism works, what affects it, and if yours is genuinely slow, and then we'll go over the specific actions that actually fix it. If you spent more than an hour on the internet, you've probably seen a lot of the misinformation that floats around online surrounding the metabolism. Namely, you're told that you can boost it with specific foods, that being overweight means that yours is slow and unchangeable, that it can become damaged, and age can destroy it beyond repair. Now, if we're serious about actually making progress, we need to know if these claims hold any weight, or if they're just another tactic for someone to sell us something or pull in views. To do this, we first need to understand what is our metabolism? Basically, our metabolism is just the sum of chemical reactions that are happening in the body. And it's often described in terms of two main processes, catabolism and anabolism. Anabolism basically just involves building smaller molecules into larger ones, like amino acids into protein chains, and requires energy. Catabolism, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. It involves breaking down larger molecules into smaller ones, usually releasing energy. For example, carbohydrates are broken down into glucose, which are then used to produce ATP, one of the body's main sources of energy. For these processes to run properly, we need to be fueling our bodies with three main energy providing nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats also known as our macronutrients. The body breaks down these nutrients as well as using stored glycogen and fat to resynthesize ATP, the molecule our cells directly use for energy. Both anabolism and catabolism are happening simultaneously in different tissues and together they make up what we refer to as our metabolism. And now we know exactly what the metabolism is, let's take a look at what drives it up or down. All the processes that we've just talked about show up in the body as our total daily energy expenditure. This is essentially just the total amount of energy that you use to stay alive, move, eat, train, and just do basic things. This total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE, is usually broken up into three main parts. Resting energy expenditure, or REE, physical activity energy expenditure, or PAEE, and the thermic effect of food, or TEF. Your resting energy expenditure takes up the largest chunk of your total daily energy expenditure for most people. This is basically just the energy that your body uses to stay alive, keeping your brain, heart, liver, kidneys, and other tissues in your body up and running. Research shows that your fat-free mass, so all things like your muscle, bone, organs, etc., explains roughly three quarters of the differences in REE and total daily energy expenditure between people, with fat mass having a smaller but still significant effect. In simple terms, the more tissue you have, especially high-cost organs and a decent amount of muscle, the higher your baseline of energy expenditure. PAEE then sits on top of this and is influenced by how much you move, how hard you move, and how heavy you are. TEF is essentially just the energy cost of digesting, absorbing, and processing the nutrients you put into your body, with protein being the most expensive, carbs in the middle, and fats the lowest. Age also plays a role in the rate of your total daily energy expenditure, but it's not as much as it's often presented. Once you take into account lean mass and body size, your total daily energy expenditure across the life course is actually pretty stable and only really starts to significantly decline past 60 mainly as a product of people losing muscle as they get older and moving less. Sex and gender also matter much less than body size and body composition, with men usually requiring more energy simply because they are larger than women and they also have more muscle on their frame. But it's not because they were blessed with some magic, super fast metabolism. On top of that, there are also smaller effects of hormones, long-term dieting, being in the cold, and individual differences in how much someone's energy drops from a calorie deficit or rises during periods of overfeeding. These smaller effects can influence the margins, but really what influences your total daily energy expenditure is how much mass you have on your body and how often you move. So onto the question that everyone actually cares about, can your metabolism be slow? 
broken or in need of fixing? The honest answer is yes and no. Your metabolism can be slower in comparison to someone else's, but that doesn't automatically mean that it's faulty. If I'm smaller, move less and carry less lean mass than the next person, then my total energy use will be lower. There are medical conditions like untreated hypothyroidism that does influence the amount of energy we expend on a daily basis, but they are the exception and usually show up with other clear symptoms and from a blood test. For most people, what gets labeled as a slower metabolism is really just a mixture of lower fat-free mass, less movement, and for some people, an extended period of dieting that maybe has nudged their energy expenditure down a bit. So your metabolism absolutely can sit at the lower or higher end of a normal range, but that doesn't mean that it's broken or faulty or something that needs to be fixed. Which means, thankfully, especially for us petite girls, there are ways that we can increase it. First, we can raise our resting energy expenditure by building lean mass. Unfortunately, adding muscle to our frames won't help us burn an additional 100 calories every single day. At rest, each kilo of muscle mass only burns around 8 to 10 more calories than fat mass. But over several kilos, that still does add up over time. More muscle also helps you to train harder and stay more active, which pushes up your total daily energy use in the long run. So as a baseline, aim to resistance train around three to four times per week, including a push, pull, hinge, and squat variation in your routine, and get progressively better on those movements over time. Did I say thrusting? Also thrusting. Don't forget your thrusting. I think I forgot to say frost, frosting. Secondly, we can increase our PAEE. This is the part you really have the most control over on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to raising your energy expenditure. It includes your training, but also your job, walking, steps, housework, and just general faffing about. For most people, it can range from a small chunk of your total daily energy use to a huge portion, depending on how much they actually move. That means going from, say, 3,000 steps and no training to 8 to 10,000 steps and three to four training sessions a week can add hundreds of calories to your daily energy use, which is far more of an impact than a tiny little bump in muscle. Also, the aim is not to do cardio all day in order to burn as many calories as possible, but just create a sustainable baseline that you can actually stick to in the long run. This could just be some regular resistance training, some conditioning if you enjoy it, and a daily step count that you can realistically keep up. Just keep in mind that when you do increase your energy expenditure, there is a point where your body just adapts and starts burning less energy in other areas. So doing more is not endlessly better. It still needs to be realistic for your life. Third, we can increase our TEF. Like I mentioned already, the thermic effect of food is the energy that your body uses to absorb, digest, and process the food you eat. Protein has the highest cost in part because your body can't use the amino acids as they come into the body. It has to break off the nitrogen, turn it into urea, and either oxidize the rest for energy or convert it into other substrates. All of these processes uses more ATP than simply storing carbs as glycogen or fats as body fat. In practical terms, the TEF of protein is roughly around 20 to 30 percent of its calories. Carbs are around 5 to 10 percent and fats are around 0 to 3 percent. But that doesn't mean that you can just eat your way to an insanely fast metabolism by eating an insanely high protein diet. But it does mean that eating higher protein and foods that are mostly whole or single ingredient can give you a small bump in daily energy use. Aiming for around 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilo of your body weight on a daily basis spread across your meals slightly raises your TEF, whilst also helping you manage your appetite and retain muscle mass if you are in a calorie deficit. But remember, your TEF is still only a small slice of your total daily energy use, so it's a helpful nudge in boosting your energy expenditure, but not the main driver. At this point, it should be pretty clear that your metabolism is not some mysterious entity that is broken or needs to be rescued. It's just a sum of the work that your body is doing and how much tissue you have doing that work. If you've been blaming your weight on a slow metabolism for years, but you haven't been consistently resistance training, you eat low protein, and you don't really move at all during the day, you don't have a broken metabolism,
metabolism, you have a series of habits that you can consciously change. Build some more muscle, move consciously throughout the day, eat a decent amount of protein with each meal and your metabolism will adapt in the direction that you want it to. I really hope you guys found this video helpful and it helped dispel some of the myths surrounding your metabolism that you might have seen online. Please let me know down below if it did and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there to join us pookies. Hopefully I will catch you guys in my next one.